Greetings and salutations everybody, this is Kirk Nelson with the Pixel Pro. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a suite of Adobe products to create a cool 3D rendered pie chart to use in an infographic. So let's start things off with Adobe Illustrator. Now you'll notice that I'm running CS6 as I will be also a Photoshop and InDesign. Let's start with a new file. We'll use the RGB color mode for this case because it's going to work better in Photoshop. And let's use the graph tool, but I'm going to go down to use the pie graph tool. And hold down the shift key and draw out what appears to just be a flat circle. Now in the spreadsheet that comes up, I'm going to go ahead and enter a couple of values. You could import values from a spreadsheet from say Excel or some other comma delineated format if you already have that but since this is just a demo I'm going to use some made-up numbers let's use 80 for here and 20 for here just to keep things simple once I've got the values entered I hit the check button and we see the pie graph being generated accordingly now if we want to edit any of this we need to break it up so let's grab this object here we'll go to object expand and what that lets us do is grab these individual pieces and move them around because it's no longer linked to the pie chart data it is simply shapes because I'm gonna pick both of these and go to edit copy from here I'm going to minimize Illustrator and launch Photoshop now with Photoshop open I'm going to file new it automatically defaults to the preset of the clipboard which is going to work fine here because I'm going to go to edit paste and I get the paste dialog box here because Photoshop is wondering what it is I am trying to do with this illustrator object that I've got on the clipboard and I want to paste this as a shape layer and it comes in using the foreground color to fill this shape layer I'm going to make the file just a little bit larger so we have a little room to work here okay so now it's time to turn this pie chart into a 3d object now you may be wondering why didn't I use the extrude and revolve command in Illustrator that's because Illustrator uses that feature to simulate a 3d appearance and you don't really have a lot of control over the final render you can sort of create a pseudo 3d rendering through it but it's not going to really calculate the shadows and the reflections and a lot of other fun things that you can do with the 3d here in Photoshop extended so I'm in the 3d menu and I am going to select new 3d extrusion from selected path and if we spin this around you can see Photoshop has taken that path and it's extruded it out into a really thick pie chart so let's grab that first shape that shape one which is really both those pads the larger area and the smaller area and in the properties panel here I'm gonna pull down on the depth so that it's not nearly as thick and big around alright now with the shape one still selected I'm gonna go up and pick my coordinates and I'm going to zero out the Y and the Z rotation and on the X rotation set it to a 90 so that turns it perfectly sideways pick my current view so I can see that a little bit now I would like to add a bevel to the edges here so I grab, go back to my shape 1 in the 3d panel go to the cap section of the properties panel and I'm going to change my contour to the half round and I get the widget here so I want the be bevel width to expand in maybe the inflation up a little a little bit more on that bevel angle and we'll swing our view around again to see how it catches on that other side I'm liking the way that's starting to look now at this point I would like to add different extrusion values to these two pieces because if we were doing more pies it might be helpful to have the different pieces represented also by height so it's sort of a combination pie chart bar chart type of thing for the sake of simplicity in this demo I'm just doing these two pieces here but 
the concepts are still the same. With my first shape selected, I'm going to go to the th back to the 3D menu and I'm going to split the extrusion. And what that does is it groups the two shapes together, but now they are completely separate. They're two individual 3D objects. And in fact, now with that second one selected, I'm going to move it out a little more from the primary one and drop the extrusion down just a bit on that. And while it's selected, I'm going to go ahead and snap it to the ground plane too. Snap object to ground plane. Let's go ahead and move the, the primary object also to the ground plane so we can see things a little bit better. Reduce that extrusion on him just a bit too and get to that ground plane. All right, let's change our view just a little bit. Okay, I'd also like to color these two pieces individually as well. I'm going to grab the first three material lines for this original shape, and in the materials properties, go and select the plastic glossy white, which can be found once you've added the plastics set to your materials library. Then I'm gonna pick the top three materials for the other one and also add the plastic glossy. We'll do red this time. Nah, I'd actually like to make that more yellow. So on the diffuse chip here, I click it and select a yellow hue. Now it's about time to set up the lighting as we'd like it. So I switch to the lighting section of my 3D panel. I'm going to increase the softness of that shadow and the direction of my light to something about there. Go back to my regular scene and now it's time for me to render. So we hit this render button and we let Photoshop cook for a minute. And here we go, a nicely rendered pie chart. Now I'm going to switch back to my layers panel and I'm actually going to throw away the background layer. Something to note is even without this background layer you can still see the shadow. The shadow itself is built into the rendered 3D layer. So I want to now trim this down through image trim to pull away those transparent pixels. And I'm ready just about to go over to InDesign. First, let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to save it as a PSD file because once I import it over to InDesign, InDesign will recognize the inherent transparency already built into the PSD. I don't need to worry about trying to export as, as a ping or TIFF or any other type of transparency holding file. The PSD file works just fine. Also, I'd like to note at this point that this is a pie chart any similarity to a classic eating themed video game character is purely coincidental. So let's go ahead and load up Adobe InDesign. Now I've gone through previously and already laid out an infographic just for us to use in this case. And I'm on my graphic layer here. And I'm going to place that pie chart PSD that we created earlier. Put right down here towards the bottom of the page. You can already see how that built-in shadow is working really well with this page. Now, once I've got this open, I don't want the text to be overlaying on this. I'd like it to wrap around it. So I'm going to add in a quick circle shape. And in my text wrap panel, wrap that around there. We'll add in a couple of labels. And now here we have our layout page talking about the predominance of classic video game characters and infographics in which we started out with a pie chart from Illustrator. We rendered it in 3D in Photoshop, and then we laid it out with another design seamlessly in InDesign. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful.